Well, today finds me at the headwaters of the Ammanusik River in northern New Hampshire here. This river drains um, off of the west side of the Presidential Range, including Mount Washington and Mount Monroe, um, through the Ammanusik Ravine. There's a hiking trail that goes up through that ravine. It has some incredible waterfalls and flumes. And it leads to an area that's above tree line called the Lake of the Clouds. From there, the Appalachian Trail can be found and it goes up Mount Washington and keeps on going to other mountains um, that are above tree line. And if you go the other way on Mount, uh, the Appalachian Trail, that Lake of the Clouds, you end up at Mount Monroe in a very short distance. So that trailhead for the Ammanusik Ravine is just a couple miles from where I'm standing here. This is the upper falls of the Ammanusik River. Some huge potholes in the rock here from higher water levels, probably during glacial melting. Um, really, really clean water here. So my, my day will be spent exploring the Ammanusik Ravine. I've got a good weather forecast with light winds and moderate temperatures to get up near tree line around Lake of the Clouds. My interest in going to a mountain that has a railroad and a road to the top is very low, even though that's the highest point around here, Mount Washington. It has the, wor the world's worst weather, and the weather forecast is very good for today. I'm going to stay at tree, you know, try to get to tree line and, uh, and enjoy the views. I just like to go to places that are a little bit less developed than the summit of Mount Washington. So my goal today is to get up around tree line and to get some views and not go all the way to the very top of Mount Washington. But the weather forecast today is about as good as it gets for climbing that mountain with light winds, temperatures in the upper 40s. This is early November. It hasn't been below freezing or wintry at all lately. So the trails are probably still in the same condition they would be in September and early October. That being said, a person should always be prepared for winter weather on Mount Washington, and I am. I've got snow pants, I've got gloves, I've got several winter layers in my pack, a winter hat, extra food, extra provisions. Many people have died from exposure above tree line on these mountains around here, especially in the warmer months when they don't realize how cold it can get even in June and July and August. So um, we got a good weather day. We're going to give this a try. If anything were to get dangerous, either ice on the trails or unexpected weather, I would definitely turn around. You got to keep your head about you in this kind of environment and not let your ego get in the way of common sense. So um, let's start exploring this trail and take a good look at the Ammanusa Ravine and hopefully we can get up the tree line and really see a unique environment. And we've been on the trail about a half hour here. We've already covered a mile on some fairly level undulating terrain. A lot of water seeping off this mountainside, folks. Make for real icy travel in the wintertime, especially if there's no snow to cover the ice. Started at 3.1 mile marker. We've come a, a mile pretty quickly, but um, that's going to change as the trail gets steeper. It becomes hand over foot and even some sloping ledges you have to negotiate towards the top. 
But we're back near the Amanusik River here. And this is the headwaters here. And we'll have many chances to look at that river as we ascend the Amanusik Ravine. And the Amanusik River is by your side the whole way up so far. There's many glimpses of this above tree line area as you hike up this ravine. Way behind those spruce trees is the, uh, you can almost see the tree line if you look carefully. So tree line is about 5,000 feet. It varies a little bit. Um, trees get a lot shorter above 4,000 feet, so you start to get views even then. Let's, uh, let's keep on climbing. There's some pretty impressive waterfalls coming soon. We'll make sure we stop and record those. Well, I'm sure it's a pretty little waterfall down there. That's called the Gem Pool. And after you cross that, which has plenty of rocks to rock hop on at this water level, um, it's all up. I've been climbing for a good 20 minutes since I left there. It's not technically difficult, but it's straight up. Um, I'm estimating I'm at about 4,000 feet right now. Parking lot was at 2,500. So I've climbed about 1,500. The uh, Lake Cloud is um, Lake of the Clouds is um, about 5,000 feet. So we've done over half the horizontal distance and over half of the vertical climbing, but the uh, tough part is still ahead. And I'm going to estimate we're at maybe 42, 4,300 feet in elevation, and the trail in the uh, brook here um, are all in one. You can stay to the side of the brook. Um, there's a lot of sloping ledge up here. I don't find this that tough because there's no ice. Just a couple little trickles of water that froze last night. Not enough to be a problem, but you could expect it to be a problem in any colder weather, especially on a north facing slope where it probably never gets the sun. So all kinds of falls up here. We'll keep recording them as we can get to them. And the trees are getting shorter. And the views are getting more frequent. Boy, have we got good weather. Just a little bit of haze out there, but you can still see probably as much as there is to see on a clear day you can see today. And we'll get more views as we continue this hike up to Lake of the Clouds. Amazing views of Mount Washington here, folks. There just aren't that many days in the year where it stays this clear all day long. Today's one of them, though. And, um, you know, this doesn't get any sun in places back here. Forecast high was well above freezing, even at the upper elevations today. There's some sheet ice there. It's easily avoidable today, but um, as the weather gets colder and stays colder, 
that would make it pretty tough to get through here i did bring micro spikes for that reason i can easily avoid this ice right now but if there was a huge area to traverse i would do that but i wouldn't want to do the whole mountain like that so um that would be a good reason to turn around or not try to come up here but i knew with the mild weather in the past few weeks any ice would be very limited and as we approach tree line let's just take a look at some of the trees that grow up here all i'm seeing for evergreens or coniferous trees up here right now is balsam fir i haven't seen a red spruce or a black spruce um in a while the red spruce were down lower are uh, supposed to be black spruce up higher in these mountains we'll see if we can find some i know in the adirondacks black spruce grows in the bogs but it also grows up high so that's the case in the white mountains too we'll see if we can find some well these um mountain ashes Get a pretty large compound leaf. And to get a large compound leaf, you need a large bud. They're bright purple. Quite handsome in the winter. They get handsome berries in the fall, but they're all gone now. So an easy way to tell mountain ash in the winter is a large purple bud. And quite a bit of mountain ash here. It, it likes full sun, so it's taking advantage of this area with shorter balsam fir trees and some birches up here too i'm assuming this is um paper birch there's a subspecies of paper birch that grows up higher and i'm assuming that's what it is but without leaves or any bark to really look at that's peeling it's hard to tell it could be yellow birch up this high but i think it's paper birch so uh, i'll leave that mystery unsolved but it's definitely a birch and um it's in the mix up here Let's keep looking around. We're almost to Lake of the Clouds. And we'll keep recording what's up here. And as we go up in elevation here, we've got another evergreen species coming in and uh, sharing the space with the balsam fir. I mentioned that the red spruce was non-existent um, above about 4,000 feet. I wasn't seeing any. And there was plenty of balsam fir. It's this real vibrant green color and needles here about three quarters of an inch long on these trees they can get longer right next to it is a tree with a duller bluish green almost looks like it's got like a somebody sprayed it with a powder or something this is our black spruce um, needles are shorter and duller than those of the red spruce the cones look different but i'm not finding cones up here um, I did do a segment on black spruce um, in the Adirondacks. There's a short little clip on this, on my Barking Up the Right Tree channel called Black Spruce with a View, and I found some up there on Algonquin Peak with um, cones. This black spruce and balsam fir is mostly growing sideways here. It's not growing up. Maybe some cones tucked away down underneath there. I'd have to look a little harder. But it's definitely more of a bluish green color. These needles aren't more than a half inch long on these particular specimens. Um, I don't want to do this up here, but if you um, pull a needle off and roll it in your fingers, the spruce needles are squarish. You can feel four sides. The balsam fir and the hemlock needles are flat. And if you roll them between your fingers, it's obvious it's just got a flat, a flat surface. So and the balsam fir and the hemlock needles have white lines on the back you can actually see that right here so um when the balsam fir and black spruce grow sideways instead of up um there's a name that they use to describe it it's called krumholtz it's a german name for twisted wood as you can see it is all twisted and going every which way but up if it tries to go up too high it gets wind burned so it only grows in these pockets between the boulders and ledges up at this elevation and um once it gets too tall it gets wind burned and it only can grow sideways at that point so as you go down the mountain the crumb holds turns into smaller trees and eventually to trees that are much taller than your average hiker so um 
that's what we got up here is the black spruce and the balsam fir and i think they're pretty easy to tell apart on this mountain at least there, there's an obvious difference in the color and the size of the needles and the shading but a beautiful place to learn these plants and there's a lot of black spruce behind here there's a whole pocket of it where it's pretty much the dominant plant right back there And we'll just pan around. We're at the junction with the Appalachian Trail here. We'll go over to the other side and look at the Lake of the Clouds and the view from that side. But boy, oh boy, you really don't have to go to the summit of these mountains to get the view you want. Once you get above tree line, it's all view. That's Mount Monroe right there. It's only a few hundred feet higher than here. I might scramble up there more interested in looking at the plants and the view from the other side by the lake at this point and uh, have about an hour before it should be turnaround time and allowing plenty of daylight to get back down the mountain Boy, the shadows create such neat photos and videos in the late fall when you get a clear day. What an amazing place. The shadows are so long even at noontime. And I think right over this ledge is our Lake of the Clouds. That was my goal for this hike was to go up the ravine, check out some of the falls, check out this Lake of the Clouds. Wow, that is pretty. And one given the chance, these balsam fir and black spruce can survive at this elevation between these boulders. So that's where you're finding it. Even right up to the summit of Mount Monroe, which is 5,300 feet. Where there's a chance for them to grow, they will grow. So um, tree line is based on what the weather is on your particular part of the mountain. As far as I know, there are no trees anywhere on the top of Mount Washington. But if there were some, they'd probably be on the southeast side that gets a little less wind. And there is a path right up here to the Lake of the Clouds. A little bit of ice here. It was pretty cold last night. It was in the 20s. So there's still some ice on the pond here. We'll have to get up in the upper 40s today. That ice might have a chance to melt before the overnight temperatures drop again. And I'm sure it's only a matter of a few more days or weeks at the most before this is all frozen up here. So what a beautiful little lake up here. Um, just a, this is a real interesting sensory experience, um, something unlike any other mountain, this lower elevation, incredible views, just a different feel, but you got to pick your days to come up this high. That goes without saying so many people have come up here unprepared or the weather wasn't ideal and, um, Paid, paid the price for that unfortunately so I, I knew we had good weather today I came prepared if the weather wasn't good we're gonna look around just a little bit more we're gonna go up to the top of Mount Monroe and eat lunch and then we got to start heading back down here we are looking down at Lake of the Clouds we're almost up to the top of Mount Monroe a little over 5,300 feet they do have this path demarcated with rocks Partly so you know where it is, partly to keep you on the path, 
not trample on the vegetation which has um, is very fragile has a very short growing season and once it's trampled it doesn't really recover so um, we'll stay on the path here we'll take a look at what there is to see from the path and uh, catch a view look in the other direction in just a minute here and the views are continuous as you climb Mount Monroe here and there's rock cairns to help you find your way um, not as many rocks along the trail to help you know where to go so um, not hard to follow but try to stay off the grasses up here and the other plants and uh, wow what a view I'm not even going to start to name the mountains up here besides Mount Washington and Mount Monroe what a view you're looking south towards where I was yesterday possibly um, the sandwich range and then there's one right there sticks up like a little bit of a pyramid um, I was thinking about doing that today but I knew the forecast was really good for going up this high and it starts with the CH something I didn't learn the pronunciation well enough to try to replicate it Chokura or something like that a Native American name and we're working our way around I see Atatash ski area down in um, Bartlett there's a reason why the ski runs only go up to about 3,000 feet in these mountains it's just too cold to ski when you get above that Waterville Valley and Wildcat do go over 3,000 feet and um, boy pick your day to go to those ski areas too they're great great views but um, the wind can be a big issue and they get wind holds all the time as well as Cannon Mountain I think Cannon Mountain gets over 3,000 feet with their ski trails but a lot of them don't Loon Mountain uh, Bretton Woods which is right near here Atitash, uh Cranmore Black Mountain all stay down below 3,000 feet so what a great view you can see some of the uh, mountains over towards Mount Lincoln and Mount Lafayette looking west here and probably into Vermont but I don't know those mountains well enough and there was a little bit of haze today to make the furthest view a little bit hard to make out um, there's an inversion going on today it was actually colder at the bottom of the mountain than there was at the top the winds are light except right up here where there's a gentle breeze so that haze has been building all morning and it probably won't scour out so that's going to limit our further views but i need to make a point of getting back down the mountain it's almost one o'clock and um we'll look at the map i'll be taking some stops on the way back down so we'll look at the map then and we'll chart our course this is an easy trail to follow up the Amanusik Ravine. You really only have one trail to follow until you get to the top. And there are signs at that point for the trails going up Mount Washington, over towards Tuckerman Ravine. There's a trail that bypasses this mountain right here, um, down below us. I believe that's the Appalachian Trail down below us that bypasses this mountain. And those through hikers have to make really good time, so... Sometimes they have to uh, not stop and smell the roses to get the trail done by the time uh, the snows arrive. So um, don't know if they would come up here or just stay on the trail, but there's several spurs up here that the um, Appalachian Trail does not follow but lead to the highest points. And then the Appalachian Trail kind of skirts around the edges. So that's what we got here, Amanusik Ravine, Lake of the Clouds, and Mount Monroe. Um, Great day to do this hike. I wasn't sure if I'd ever get weather to do this kind of hike without being here all the time to pick my days, but I had three days and Mother Nature allowed for this. So this is a, a highlight of my, my entire um, mountaineering career right here. I mean, I, this is unlike anything I've ever done in New Hampshire. Alrighty, well, I left the top of the mountain about an hour and a half ago. Stopped to eat some lunch on the way back down here, and um, I don't think I don't think the sun ever made it on this side of the mountain, and it doesn't feel that warm either. So I'm glad I came prepared for cooler weather. Still got some interesting falls to look at on the way back down. 
and a nice view. Obviously, at, at times of high runoff, this would be unaffordable because you do have to ford the stream right here above this falls. And at high runoff levels, that would not be safe, especially with the tumble that you could take if you got swept off your feet. So, icy weather, you'd have to come prepared. High water weather, you'd probably have to turn around if it was too high. So if there's been a lot of rain, this would not be your trail to take the day after. It's been real heavy rain. There's other trails that don't have as many fords um, to come up these mountains. So let's retrace our steps on the map here and then I'm going to wrap it up. I still got two and a half hours of daylight left so I can take my time descending the Amanusik Ravine Trail. I've got the larger map out right now that shows the whole area, Mount Washington, over towards Bretton Woods. There's also a more detailed map um, of the Mount Washington trails on the flip side of this map. But I started at Amanusik Ravine parking lot, which is just before you get to the entrance to the Cog Railway. It parallels that road and follows the Amanusik River and Monroe Brook, crosses the Mon Monroe Brook. Again, in high water, that would be tough, if not impossible. Follows the Amanusik River, crosses it twice on the way up to Lake of the Clouds and the Lake of the Clouds Hut. That's only 3.1 miles. If I take away from the time that I was actually stopping to record videos, it still probably took me three hours um, with the 2,500 foot elevation gain. It's another three or four hundred feet to the top of Mount Monroe. It's pretty rocky up there too. So with a few ups and downs and the distance to go up Mount Monroe is probably a 3,000 foot climb. Maybe a little bit more and um, just as much on the way back down the sloping ledges that didn't seem too tough on the way back on the way up definitely were tricky on the way down. And um, I had to do the old slide on the fanny to keep myself from putting taking a chance of falling so I had to do a few of those so that being said great day to be out here this is definitely doable for a day hike if you're in good enough shape to do that kind of a climb and if you allow enough time for it I allowed the whole day nine hours of daylight or ten hours of daylight and um, and if you have the weather forecast to do it safely and to enjoy the highlight of this trip which is the area that's above tree line.